Uh, hi, my name is Pete, and uh, I made a video about repairing the lens, rebuilding the lens for the Canon PowerShot SX10, SX20, and SX1 IS model uh, cameras. Uh, the lens is uh, uh, kind of difficult to, to disassemble and reassemble, and it's um, a little daunting and very, very frustrating if you haven't done it yet and there's no reason you should have done it uh, the only reason I could see to take apart a lens like this is to check to make sure that everything's working properly uh, or to make sure that it was not damaged in the event of an accident or that kind of a thing um, the lens is pretty well put together there are not a very large amount of moving parts uh, and that is what makes it so complicated lenses usually just all scale apart there's one part that embeds into another one and everything's usually twists together and pulls apart in one fashion or another. This lens is much, much different. It's very simple and very complex in its simplicity. So, uh, watch the video. I need you to keep a couple of things in mind. You cannot lose any parts. Uh, there are a couple of small pins that you need to remove. There's one small spring in particular. There are a couple of small ball bearing sized pieces and they're very, very tiny. So, please work in a clean area make sure that you don't lose anything and just pay attention if I tell you to watch for a spring watch for that spring um, speaking of which the parts are not magnetic the removable parts so you have to keep an eye on them you can't just sweep the floor with a magnet because it doesn't work you have to keep in mind the ribbon cables which are very fragile be gentle with them treat them with love and respect the video starts from uh, the assumption that you've removed the lens from the camera and that you've removed the back uh, plate with the sensor from the lens itself. And now that you've got the lens tubes in your hand, you've got the uh, outer sleeve which has the um, focal length measurements on the top of it, uh, you know, wide angle to telephoto, uh, and then you've got the interior part which includes the helicoil and the focus units and the aperture which are all stuck together and that's where I start the video. Uh, because this is really where it starts to get confusing and you, it's hard to comprehend how the whole thing comes apart and goes back together again. So watch the video. Um, if you have any questions, let me know uh, and good luck. Uh, and if you're not really sure about the whole process, don't do it. Uh, if you want to try yourself, then Godspeed, go for it. Uh, watch the video twice. Make sure you understand what you're getting into. That's it. Uh, thanks. Good luck. For disassembly slash reassembly there's a little pin right here and you need to pull that pin out there it is and you can press it out from here you gotta be careful because you don't want to scratch that lens you don't want to lose the pin so cover it with your fingertip that little trapdoor and press it from the inside and it'll pop and out will come a pin which is over here and a little tiny spring and you cannot lose the pin or the spring and now the front element is recessed and you're gonna kind of tap it out so it comes out here and now that it's fully extended and it has to be fully extended we're going to rotate this a little bit more and you should see two more pins and you remove those pins using our little plier which you can use like a little Leatherman but you have got to make sure that you do not lose them because you will feel like a jerk <gasps> there's one don't lose it don't lose it put it in a tray and there's the other one. I gotta get the other one. Okay, so now we're talking about reassembly. So we've got these pieces right here. These little guys have a spring in them. Give it a little wiggle, it'll come apart. This is your aperture unit. See the aperture? This is your rear focusing lens. And these two guys go like this. Now, at the top, there's a little divot in this ridge here, and there's an itty bitty divot in this ridge here. This one, this guy here, with the spring on it, has to go 
into this one. So we fit those together. You gotta give them a little wiggle and a jiggle and then they'll go in like this. And then this guy down here fits into this little tiny slot like a little corridor. I don't know if you can see that or not. Right there. Okay. Make sure this is clean. Clean. See? No fingerprints, no smudges, no grease. Make sure this is clean, which I have just completely ruined doing this little video. So, hold on a moment. This next one here, this way, we're turning like clockwise. This has one pin in it. If we go back to the three and we go counterclockwise, you would have two pins here. This is the sprung one that you removed first. So, the two, there, oh, this is the barrel. There's a long slot here, a long slot here, and then a short slot there. It's kind of hard to see, but they're there. Short, long, and long, all right? You want to put the two pins and the three pins in the two long slots. But you gotta tuck those ribbons in. You cannot disturb those ribbons. Those are very fragile, okay? So, ribbons are in here. And this is in here, and now you need to line up the pin, the stem, this guy here, and this guy here. So, let's find our three. Or easy, you know, you can line up the one pin, the single pin, with the short corridor there, the short track. And then we're going to make sure that they all sit in here like this. That one's in, and this one's in. And now they only go forwards and backwards, and they'll do it very easily if you did it right. If you didn't do it right, they will not move freely. This is a good time to point out that you need to make sure that these three little race bearings, if you want to call them anything, have to be in place because they will remove themselves. Make sure they're all in there and everything's fairly clean, not any heavy dust on here. I think this is supposed to get something like a white lithium grease on it, but I don't have any, so we're just going to deal. We've got our two pins here, one and two and three. Now we've got our three races there, one and two and three. You can see it in there a little bit. And we're gonna line them up right above that or near to above that. So we want it to start right about there. And you just give this a little push in here and it fits into the slot and then it starts to sit down. Everything starts to sit down. You need this to wiggle a little bit. Now, now see, look at this. Where do you think that went? Son of a... Okay, uh, when last we left off, I dropped two of the bearings for the races on the floor. So, we're gonna put our little tray underneath this here, so if it happens again, we'll be better. The two pins we're gonna insert here, we've got this one here. We've got, in the long corridor, we've got the one extra position. It's a little hard to see there. That That's going to be the sprung pin. That's going to be one of the last things we put in. And then you've got the little single stubby one in this stubby little track here. Okay, So, we've got three tracks right there. And we're going to line up our three pin set right almost right above it and a little bit to the left. Which you can see right here and there's the three so line that up beforehand okay three and then it kind of you just give it a little tap forward in the front end here as you place it into that position and then you twist and then we're gonna pull this guy in and it's gonna wiggle a little tiny bit now we've gotten this in here so far now we need to rotate this until we see this little porthole here, this little window. And you gotta push on it a little bit from the back and the inside here, like this. So when they're out of way, you need them to line up just there. And that's where you're gonna put the two pins back into place, just right right there, just like that. So hang on a minute, we're gonna do that and then we'll come back. So, as long as that we've got the two pins in place, we want them to kind of fit into those two little races right there, there's one here, and there's one on that side. So you give this a little wiggle until they kind of fit in there. And then it will twist. And at the same time you're applying pressure here 
just a little bit as you twist and it'll kind of hop and once it hops you can push this back careful not to touch that lens and not to leave any big fingerprints on that ring there and you push it back in once you push it back into that position that little hole shows up there and that is the one that you press the sprung pin into so I've got my little this is tiny and it's really hard to see I'll try to make a photograph but this is that long pin and has a little tiny spring on it and you gotta put that right in that little hole which you gotta be a little bit careful about because you don't want to lose the spring and you don't want to lose the pin because if you do you are screwed so we'll give it a little push I believe it's in place and then you gotta push it in just a tiny little bit and then you will see it's kinda hard to see you'll get a little bit of spring action there that's good and it's not jumping out and it's not trying to leap out into outer space be very careful about this okay so now that we've got these things we've got our little pin in there we've got our other two pins in here although you will never see them again and the reason you will never see them again is because we've got this one in here and this has a limit in its track so it won't allow you to move it past a certain point so now that we've got all of these things in place we can rotate this and there's our little buddy the front face you there we can clean that now if we need to and everything else should be relatively dust free oil free grease free okay so we got this is extended to the front this stuff is extended all the way into the interior like that which is how it needs to be if you're gonna line anything up it's gonna be this little tiny trap door in the back with the focal uh, measurements um, you want to make sure of course that you don't have any dust or debris in there and there is absolutely no reason you should have fingerprints in here so you can use a little bit of compressed air just don't make sure make sure not to get any of the compressant itself the liquid compressant in the back end and then dust all this nonsense off real quick because we're going to assume that this is the last time you're putting this together uh, so again little window here excuse me little window here and then line that up with this guy just about and then you give this a twist that's it when you're ready to mount the lens back onto the body you need to have this out and extended before you attach it to the sensor and the mounting bracket and the reason is because of this little thing right here is designed to keep the gears retained and if you have them in this other position like all the way recessed then they won't interface so pull this all the way out and then you can kind of wiggle that into place and then uh, spin this back this way okay and it should fit Again, make sure your ribbons are out here and that they're comfortable and happy and safe and not in harm's way. And then we'll pull this all the way back like that. And then it shouldn't come out anywhere, see? It won't come out because there's a little retaining who dead. Uh, then put your gears back in, uh, which of course live down in there. That's it. Great job.